Over the last few weeks I've been getting together the components for my latest project, but this one's not for me, this one's going to be a present. Can you guess what it is? So this project is going to be an almost exact copy of this person's uh, project, Miria Grunick. Uh, and their Blinky Box created in 2013. There you can see a child playing with it. And uh, I found this because of Colin Hickey's uh, Indestructibles post. Uh, Colin was the guy who kindly sent me these PCBs. And uh, he has an Indestructible creating this thing. And uh, he uses the code from this other gentleman, an Australian guy called Simon Laws. He adjusted the code for the Arduino, so everything's ready for me just to uh, have a play with this and create it really quickly. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll link to these various different pages and posts in the description below. So it quickly became apparent that if this circuit board was fixed to the bottom of the box and my buttons were fixed on the lid of the box, then I'd need a way of disconnecting them or have very long wires on them. Um, so I've put these header pins here on the board. We've got one pin connected to the digital pin on the Arduino and then this whole row here are connected to ground. So that's my negative and each button is the yellow one with a yellow wire. A bit of heat shrink on the positive, the digital pin output and uh, just a bare DuPont connection there for the negative. So hopefully They'll all fit in quite nicely, uh, like that. So as you can see there, these are the WS2812B uh, LEDs. They're uh, tri-LEDs. Um, I'm not sure if they are actually RGB or not. Probably are, aren't they? And if you look closely there, inside the LED there, there's a little chip. Um, and that's the control chip for this LED and uh, they're individually addressable so you can send data to this individual LED you know number 24 in the string go red and therefore this whole string can be independently controlled they're pretty clever little things and as you can see you can also cut them at any point and then connect them up later with longer wires and these are a copy, I think, of the uh, NeoPixel um, created by Adafruit. And uh, they seem to work pretty well, although they are quite power hungry. So there's 60 of these LEDs in my string. So I guess in reality that's 180 LEDs. So um, this takes quite a bit of power. So I'm using this power bank here with two reclaimed 18650s in it. It should be able to give up to about two amps. But because there might be a surge if these LEDs go particularly bright or white, every single one of them is on. So I'm also going to use this 6.3 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor on the uh, power input to that string of LEDs just to give it a bit of a buffer. So with a bit of masking tape on the top I've been able to draw out my pattern and cut my holes um, and with a bit of um, dremeling or should I say a dremel type tool um, I've been able to widen these holes enough to get these switches through and they fit quite nicely. And with the buttons fitted, I think it looks quite neat. Just one mistake there, you can see the Dremel just drifted across there and there is a slight mark, sadly. But uh, hopefully nobody will notice that. So I decided I didn't want this um, exposed to the outside of this case, so I've uh, just got this micro USB extension lead and uh, I can glue that in and uh, make a hole there at the side, should just go there and then this one is for the main switch to turn it on and off and then the other side a centre point for the uh, rotary encoder. Now I've noticed that this one hasn't got a thread which is a bit of a shame so I'm going to have to glue it into a hole um, but it shouldn't move too much and this knob that I've bought has a grubber screw there we can see uh, to hold it on so hopefully nothing's going to come apart. Now I've managed to get that USB micro USB connector in there it's quite flush it's quite neat uh, but I have put a 
spot of super glue in there and the switch again reasonably neat and sits flush and that holds itself in and then on the other side that rotary encoder well that's super glued in as well because I didn't have one with a thread and on the inside we've got the micro USB connector to plug into the power bank and then the output um, I've just snipped the data wires from this USB cable again I've heat shrinked and put a DuPont connector on the negative there the positive goes through to that switch and then to another DuPont cable ready to connect to the circuit board and of course one of the advantages about using a USB power bank here is that it will make sure these batteries aren't charged, overcharged should I say and uh, it will also make sure they're not undercharged as well because this circuit will switch off if the batteries get to about 3 volts so I think it probably makes sense to test everything before I start gluing it into the box um, so everything's plugged in, all the buttons are plugged in the right places hopefully the right pins the rotary encoder's plugged in and we're powered up. So if I flip the switch. Okay. Well, it's working. There's a bit of flickering there. And if we press a button here, the green one, things go green. Excellent. White one, white, red, yellow, blue, and black, which is a rainbow. There we go. Obviously shorting something out. And uh, if I change the rotary encoder, things are, the pattern are cha is changing. Excellent. Now I'm not going to go through uploading the uh, program, the sketch to the Arduino here. Uh, that's been done on this channel before and many others. Um, but it is worth mentioning that the sketch isn't compatible with uh, Arduino IDE version 1.6. You need to go back to quite an old version, 1.0.6, which is available on the Arduino website, and I'll make sure to link to that below. Um, so you do need an old version of Arduino IDE, but it will coexist on your machine with the latest version. So uh, you just need to remember which one to open in the future. So I'm going to put the lid on this power bank so we're not looking at batteries and then I need to uh, I think hot glue this in and I think this will fit over here somewhere fairly happily. I need to leave a bit of room around the edge because that's where I need to string my LEDs so uh, let's get the hot glue gun. Okay so just a bit of all oh, this hot glue's quite yellow. Now I just need to thread these LEDs around the box and I'm thinking I want them pointing out. Um, I know the wiring is going to be quite colourful on the inside but it's probably not the prettiest thing. So I'll try and work this out somehow and then glue these LEDs into place somehow. Now that's a bit messy, I admit, and I had expected that string of LEDs to get round that box more than twice, but uh, anyway, there it is. Um, it is what it is. I could always extend that string by another half metre if I needed to in the future. Um, I also expected to uh, get less glue all over myself, but anyway, uh, let's plug everything in and we'll see what happens. So I've screwed the lid down so it's nice and secure. Let's give it a go. Excellent. Yellow, red, white, a bit blue, green, blue, and rainbow. Let's go back to red and excellent. Nice patterns. Oh, I've forgotten my knob. So that's it. I think I might have to shorten that shaft there a little bit so my knob sits a bit closer to the box itself but I'm quite pleased and I hope my daughter will enjoy playing with it um, when she gets a chance when she's a little bit older. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you can and comment down below. And I'll see you next time.